two friends are engaged in conversation, one of whom is lamenting all the things that have gone wrong in his life recently. He says to his friend, you know, things are not going well at the office. In fact, I'm going to have to declare bankruptcy on the business. And his friend says, mm, wow, well, you know, it could always be worse. His friend says, well, it is worse. Uh, you know, uh, things have gone so poorly, in fact, that uh, we're being evicted from our house and we don't have anywhere to live. His friend says, ooh, wow, mm, yeah, it could always be worse. And the guy says, not only that, but I, I wrecked my car and, and someone stole my identity and I don't have any way of knowing what comes next for me or my family. And his friend says, oh, wow, well, it could always be worse. His friend was so frustrated with his answer, he finally said, look, man, can't you have any sympathy for me at all? Why do you say it could always be worse? And his friend says, well, because it could be happening to me. I'm Ryan Barnett, lead pastor at First Methodist Waco, and I want to talk to you today about gratitude. You know, the truth is, things could always be worse. Part of what determines our experience of the world around us is how we choose to see it. There are certainly many reasons in the world today to be ungrateful, to, to be depressed, to be worried, and to be anxious, to see only the negative. After all, there is a lot of negative going on in our world right now. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. We've come to a reckoning in this country on race and race relations. What's more, people are suffering from uh, terrible economic conditions. We even see children who are starving around the world because their parents simply aren't able to work or to get out into the fields to produce. It's really overwhelming. And on top of all that that's happening out there to us, I know that many of you have things going on in your own homes for which you are broken and lamenting, hurting, thinking, how could it possibly get any worse? And yet, while there are certainly plenty of reasons for us to have a dark opinion of what the future holds, we also have the opportunity to make a different kind of choice and to experience the world differently because of it. Let me suggest to you that your whole life can be changed if you choose to see the good in everything, even in the bad things. If you can find a way to look at what's happening in your life and in the world around you, even with all of the hard things, and decide you're going to find whatever, if any, good there is, you can change the way you experience this life. There's an old Yiddish proverb about a farmer who had a stallion who did all of the work around the farm for him with him and his son. And one day that stallion ran away and the farmer's neighbor came over and said, wow, you have the worst luck. You're one a plow horse, you're one animal that helped you in the fields and ran away. The farmer said, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. A couple days later, that stallion returned and he brought with him several wild mares. Now the neighbor came over and said, wow, you have the best luck. You only had one horse and now you've got a whole herd. And the farmer said, hmm, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. A few days later, the son was out shooing one of those mares and it kicked him and broke his leg. He wasn't able to work, he wasn't able to walk, he wasn't able to do anything. The neighbor, again, as you can imagine, said, wow, you have the worst luck. To which the farmer said, hmm, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. A short time after that, uh, a warring general came by conscripting all the able-bodied young men of that village into service in his army. And of course, the farmer's son was passed over because of the broken leg. And you can guess what the neighbor said. Wow, you have the best luck because your son didn't have to go off to war like mine. And the farmer said, hmm, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. That, that farmer refused to be defined by his circumstances. He, he refused to be defined by what happened to him, but instead to look over time 
at what was happening and choose how he would allow it to affect him in his heart. You have the same exact opportunity. You have the opportunity to see and seek the good for which you can be thankful and display gratitude. The Bible tells us that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God works for the good in all things for those who love him. All things, the good and the seemingly bad, God can be at work if we allow him to. If we choose to seek and see the good that he is bringing about, then we can experience our life and the world a little bit differently. In the end, gratitude, thankfulness, these are a choice. These are a choice that you can make. You can choose to dwell on that which is broken. You can choose to dwell on that which is hard and causing suffering, or you can choose to see the good that God is doing in the world and in your life. Consider what the Bible says in Philippians. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about those things. You and I have the opportunity, certainly, to look around the world and see all the harm and harmful things that are taking place. We can choose to see the hard parts about being in quarantine in our households, or we can choose to say, I see the opportunity to be closer to my spouse and to my children. We can see hungry kids out in the world and we can choose to simply lament over that or we can choose to give God thanks for our daily bread or even better, we can choose to give God thanks that we have an opportunity to satisfy one child's hunger. We can look around and see the pain caused by racism in our society or we can choose to be grateful to have an opportunity to make a difference in even one person's life by treating them with respect and dignity, with affection and with love. I think if you will choose gratitude, choose thankfulness, you'll discover two important things. First, you will experience this life differently. It's too easy to succumb to fear, to doubt, to depression, to the darkness that rages around us. By choosing gratitude, we choose to reject those things in our hearts and instead hold on, as scripture says, to that which is good and holy and worthy of praise, to allow that to shape the way we experience the world around us. Choosing thankfulness and gratitude not only can change your experience of the world, but listen to this. I believe your choice to live a thankful, gratitude-filled life can change the world around you. Small acts of gratitude and thankfulness directed in the, towards those who are near you can change their lives as well. And so as we head into this Thanksgiving week and you begin to contemplate what it is for which you are thankful, I pray, I hope, I encourage you to focus on the good and the great that God is doing and makes available to you every day, that you choose not to be defined by the external circumstances of your life, but choose to find the good that you can participate in, in introspective and external ways. I know this, this year, this Thanksgiving, I find myself thankful and grateful for you and the opportunity for us to be in all of this together. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving.
in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel, and make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing but all you. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. Oh, you are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel and make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. You have 
broken every curse Blessed Redeemer You have set this captive free Oh Lord I can't help but see Yes, 